Welcome to Book of Mormon Central's Come Follow Me. I'm Lynn Wilson, and this year I will be having the opportunity to talk about how the Old Testament can be illuminated as we look through the lens of the Book of Mormon. Not only do we find a clear doctrine in the second witness of Christ, but we also add the Pearl of Great Price and find even more. Moses chapter 1 and Abraham chapter 3 are some of the richest chapters we have in all scripture on the nature of God, the nature of Satan, and the nature of man. And I'd like to take each of those three and divide them into a separate week. So this week, Moses chapter 1 is our best chapter in all scripture on who is our adversary and how he works. So I'd like to talk about the nature of Satan, and then next week the nature of God, and the week after the nature of man. In short, God seeks to bring us each to heaven, and Satan seeks to keep us out of heaven. I was very surprised to find that in Genesis chapter 1 through 3, there is no references to Satan. There's no references to the devil or sin or temptation or even uh, transgression. Now, these are ideas that were added later. And as we look at the entire Old Testament, there are only 16 verses that reference Satan. Out of the 23,143 verses in the Old Testament, only 16 reference Satan. Um, and most of those are in the book of Job. There's a few other chapters, but they just have one reference. A biblical scholar, not of our faith, has recently written, you'll have a devil of a time to find Satan in the Bible. I think the adversary took out who he is as part of those plain and precious truths. Any sports team knows that you have to know your adversary in order to come up to them, and our prophet has encouraged us to learn how to have the Spirit so that we can be more prepared to face the things in the future. I think the lack of understanding in the Bible on who Satan is is what has led to so much um, interesting artwork on, on how, how the devil looks. You know, the gargoyles coming off the cathedrals and the artwork of a half goat are so different than what we understand. But it's not until we add the Book of Mormon and the Pearl of Great Price in that we get this understanding. Look at this. So a total of 25 references to the adversary in the whole Old Testament, whereas in the Book of Mormon, look at these numbers. 26 for Satan, 89 for the devil, 2 for the serpent, 3 for the adversary, 1 for Lucifer, 121. That is 11 times more references to the adversary in the Book of Mormon than the Bible. If we want to learn who our enemy is, open up the Book of Mormon, and there we find that Satan is trying to usurp our Savior's role. He wants to be the God of this world. He wants to take the place of God. But the book of Moses teaches us that Satan knew not the mind of God. As I studied each of these verses, each of these 120 verses in the Book of Mormon, it's very clear that Satan is the father of lies, that he has power allowed to be used. And our first reference to him is in the Tree of Life vision of Nephi and Lehi where Nephi describes the mists of darkness are the temptations of the devil, which blindeth the eyes. But we learn just a chapter or two later that the day will come when the wrath of God is poured out upon the devil. He will lose his power, and he will be bound by the righteousness. But my favorite chapter in the Book of Mormon to understand who the adversary is and how we can combat him is Lehi. And he does this beautiful job of compiling and connecting in a concrete fashion all these ideas of Satan in the Old Testament. He is studying Isaiah 14 about Lucifer, and in his commentary in 2 Nephi chapter 2, he combines Lucifer with this fallen angel, with the devil, and the father of lies, and Satan, and finally the serpent in Eden. Listen to how he connects them. In the yellow, you can see here on my chart, these are words that are added that are not in the Old Testament. The angel of God had fallen from heaven, whereas he became the devil, having sought that which was evil. You know, all the information on Lucifer and Isaiah does not say that he was the devil or that he was Satan. He continues on. That Satan had become miserable forever. He sought the misery of all mankind. Wherefore, he said unto Eve, Yea, even that old serpent who is the devil. So see, we're combining them all the time. It's Lehi that takes this concrete connection for us, the father of all lies. We also see in the Book of Mormon, Korahor, who has this confrontation with the devil, and he says that Satan's words were pleasing to the carnal mind. And he says, they were so pleasing that I started believing them, and hence I taught them. If you just want to get a short synopsis of who the adversary is, there are four chapters that are especially helpful. First Nephi 14, 
2 Nephi 2 and 2 Nephi 9 and Alma 5. Those four have the majority of the messages, but going through 120 is very interesting. But better than all of those, I think, is understanding the book of Moses, chapter 1. From the Joseph Smith translation of Genesis, the Lord revealed this beautiful text. But both the book of Abraham and the book of Moses, I feel, are temple texts because they talk about entering the presence of God. Moses chapter 1 begins, Moses was caught up into an exceedingly high mountain and he saw God face to face. He records these sacred experiences and then he goes on to teach what we need to know before we are tempted. And this is crucial. Our prophet will teach us what we need to know before as well as the Spirit of the Lord. And as I look back at my own life, so many times I have a prompting before I have a temptation or before I'm tempted um, or before the natural man comes to pass. We learn in Moses 1 that Satan is the tempter. And often his tempting is about materialism or money. Uh, It's uh, Hugh Nibley who says that Satan's first article of false faith is you can buy anything in this world for money. But I see that Part of Satan's role is to usurp Christ in the timing. Do it on my timetable. Turn these stones now. Don't wait till you want to feed the 5,000. Feed yourself first. Do it on my timing. Or no need to wait till you're married. You know, the, Satan is the great tempter. Moses 1 also teaches us that Satan uses fear to have us forget who we are and what God expects and what God can do. So when Satan comes to usurp God's authority and says, I will be like unto the Most High, Moses identifies him and says, where is thy glory that I should worship thee? I can look upon thee in the natural man. I can judge between thee and God. Moses identified the counterfeit because he knew the Lord. And so I have to ask myself, do I know the Lord? Can I identify counterfeits? We have to learn what Moses chapter 1 verse 18 teaches, that we are nothing on our own. It's only when we call upon the name of God that we are given power over the evil one. Next week, I would like to talk about the nature of God, and that is best described in Moses chapter 1, verse 39. This is my work and my glory to bring to pass the immortality and eternal life of man. If we understood this one verse, I believe with all my heart that the world would be more unified, and I look forward to that day when every knee shall bow in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.